Hi folks, well I've got the uh, kitchen in the van, just measuring up for the worktop just now. Um, turned out uh, I did need to use a bit of foam underneath this one, so I'm going to get that covered uh, with the same material I've used to cover the sides. That way I can take the foam uh, on and off, but all the doors open fine. I'm just measuring for the worktop. Now there's been a slight change of plan uh, on this. I'm no longer going to fasten uh, to the backs of these seats. Um, or to these uh, headrest points. I'm just going to start the worktop here, go across to the front of this worktop, that way it keeps uh, any heads away from this back edge or this front edge. Um, and because these are going to be fastened with straps uh, underneath the fronts of these seats, that's going to be really securely fastened. And then the worktop is going to be uh, bolted uh, through these cupboards just for extra steps to hold that in place uh, and I also might uh, still do the uh, two the two uh, bolts or rods into this top uh, piece just for that uh, added bit of security but first we're going to get this uh, worktop uh, recut to length and uh, figure out some kind of upright for the uh, back as well so that's the worktop uh, cut to size there you see it uh, ends before the back of that seat and uh, just at the edge of that one um, and I've also cut this rail, it's not fastened on yet but that's uh, roughly what we're looking at so next up I've got to um, just mark up where I'm going to uh, actually fasten that back rail and also mark up to drill holes through the top of here um, to fasten through both cupboards. So I'm just figuring out here how best to uh, put the bolts through the worktop so I can conceal them. And then what I've come up with is uh, use a 20mm force and a bit down to a depth enough to cover the uh, bolt head. I'm using a coach bolt. And I've got a 6mm hole through there which the bolt will slide through. And then once that's in it's below the surface and then I think I'm, what I'm going to do is either fill this with uh, epoxy or just uh, regular wood filler uh, might do with the epoxy just to give it a bit more uh, security just to keep that bolt uh, in place so I'm just drawing out the force and a bit holes to a depth of around uh, 4 mil, which will leave uh, 6 mil material for the uh, bolt to hold in place and I'm measuring the depth with the uh, calipers there. Still a bit to go yet. So, just another quick spin. There we go, 4.2, that'll be fine. So, on with the rest of them. Decided just to do three three in each cupboard I think that should be sufficient right now that's all the recesses cut I'll just go back through with the 6mm drill bit uh, for the final holes and now I've got all those uh, drilled through the top of the worktop I'm now going to uh, just drill through them a little bit uh, into the cupboards just to mark uh, where I've got the drill uh, the bigger hole so what I'm going to do is I've got this 6mm bolt going through here and then uh, rather than having to try and line that up with a 6mm hole in the cupboard I'm going to drill uh, like a 20mm hole through the cupboard and then uh, use one of these uh, big washers so that you've got a bit of movement uh, in the cupboards uh, or in the worktop uh, so you can line it up so it's not uh, too difficult to get lined up but that should explain itself uh, in a minute when I've got all this uh, marked out and drilled so here's my thinking uh, with this oversized hole situation. You've got your worktop, you're trying to put it on, and you just get it in the general location, and then your bolts through the hole, and then you use these oversized washers and a wing nut uh, to fasten it in place. Then no matter where it is in that hole, it's going to be fastened up and fastened up fairly tightly. Alright, so that's my thinking with that. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, 
fit all the bolts through the worktop and get them uh, filled or epoxied depending on what I decide to do. Well it turns out all the bolts I had uh, that I was going to fasten the worktop on were a bit too long so I've had to order some shorter ones. So I'm going to get on and do just a few of the little uh, fiddly jobs I've still to do like uh, cut out uh, the fabric uh, for the holes around the sides and the back and I'm also going, just going to put a strip of this uh, across the back uh, just between these two holes where the gas bottle will fasten on just to give it a bit of uh, foam to press against just to hold it a bit tighter in place so it's not trying to slide backwards and forwards against that back wall uh, but it, as I say it will be strapped in place anyway and what else oh that's the uh, the cushion done uh, to go underneath this cupboard when it's in the van and then uh, for water situation original plan was to use one of these stainless steel bowls cut into the worktop and sort of hanging inside this cupboard but that had a few downsides the main one being it would take up space in this cupboard um, I would also use up space on the worktop unless I'd uh, made a cover for it as well and preferably if I was using this I would have wanted to put a drain in it and drain to an external tank but my parents didn't want that they just wanted to be able to lift it out and uh, empty it so I thought well, what's the point in uh, using this uh, and fitting it in place when you could just get something as simple as uh, one of these uh, silicon bowls that uh, just fold up and uh, you could use that on top and then when you're finished with it empty it and fold it down and just stick it inside the cupboard where it takes up next to no space so we decided to go that route and for water whilst I could have gone the full hog with the 12 volt uh, pump system uh, and tap uh, if I was uh, doing a built in sink I decided we'd just go and use one of these uh, 10 litre uh, water uh, jerry cans and these can be quite uh, fiddly for uh, tipping water when they're full because obviously if it's 10 litres of water you've got uh, 10 kilos uh, to lift uh, so I wanted to find some way of adding a pump uh, to the top of these uh, jerry cans and looking on eBay all the ones I could find were really expensive uh, like the whale ones talking like 30 40 quid and I really couldn't find anything that uh, suited my needs until I came across these see that manual pump for a bottle of water but they are designed to go on like your uh, water dispenser type bottles the big round ones and they come with all the stuff uh, to fasten on I'll just open this up actually one handed so there's the, uh, your pump body and it's got that ring on it uh, which clamps down onto the top of the uh, round type bottles and then you've got the additional uh, big long pipe to reach down to the bottom and the spout that goes on but without modification these things wouldn't fit on these jerry cans but seeing as I got these on eBay two of them for six pound I decided I would uh, experiment and I came up with Move that back there. A modified one. And uh, I'll just show you how well these things work. Really gives you a nice flow of water with uh, very little effort. Certainly easier just like fill a kettle than trying to tip one of these 10 litre cans into into a kettle 
So I think that was a pretty worthwhile and fairly simple uh, modification. So what I did, I'll show you on this one. I simply removed this uh, bottom section, which is simply just screwed on from underneath. There's your air bladder thing. So it's got three screws in there. I simply took them out, this section comes off. I then took my red lid off the jerry can and uh, just drilled out all the centre section um, with a pole saw and then just uh, to tie that up just with a scalpel to come up with that. I then used some uh, silicon just to seal around the inside there uh, just to make it airtight because uh, this really depends on being airtight because it pumps air into the system to force water up the pipe. And on the inside I just moved those uh, screws in a bit um, from where they were originally. And do notice they're uh, getting a bit corroded, I'll probably have to change them for stainless stainless steel screws. But uh, yeah, the general idea, and it does uh, work really well. I also took the fins, I had to take the fins off the original cap to enable it to fit uh, under this lip. Um, and that made it a bit difficult to screw it on, so I just uh, refitted this blue ring that comes on the original onto there. I might at some point just uh, paint the rest of this blue, but at the moment it's not a not a huge priority. Uh, but there's a hand pump that works uh, fantastically. Another thing I need to do, having read the instructions for this stove, I know I mean, don't know what came over me, but um, it says it has to sit on a non-flammable surface, and uh, because there's no base on this stove, uh, I think it might be wise to put something underneath it uh, rather than just sitting it directly on uh, what will be a vinyl top. So I'm going to cut uh, this piece of metal to size to fit underneath it but I'm also going to modify this so that it becomes the actual clamp that holds the uh, stove in place on the worktop. So that's just going to be a, a little little job. A little metal job, I think I marked it out already to be honest. Yep. You see the uh, score marks there. So I just need to cut that out. And then modify it to, uh, I think I'll just uh, fold out a couple of tabs and just put a bolt through them, uh, through the sides of the stoves. And hopefully that will do the trick. So a bit to get on with uh, whilst I'm waiting for my bolts to arrive. Right, so the plate does fit uh, perfectly underneath the uh, hob. So now we're just going to figure out uh, either tabs or brackets. Right, so I've decided on brackets uh, rather than uh, folding up a piece of this as uh, tabs, uh, just because I want to keep that really covering the hole of the bottom of the stove and if I bent any up. For tabs, it uh, would expose a bit of the vinyl underneath the stove. So what I've done is I've just roughly welded a couple of uh, nuts. Let's see, roughly. Look at that. Work of art. Yeah. So I've just welded a couple of nuts on the back, um, and they'll go inside and get fastened down inside, and then I'll drill a hole through the side of the stove to match up, and just put a six mil bolt through there. But I'll wait until I've got the uh, worktop covered uh, before I finish up doing that. Just in case anything comes up that uh, I need to change 
um, the design for. I can't really see anything, but there's no point rushing that. So all that really needs is uh, just marking on the outside, hole drilling, marking on the inside there, and hole drilling. This uh, sheet's also getting there, uh, going to be screwed down in a few different places, so it will be held solidly to the worktop. I hope the two brackets should be enough. I would think so. So, I think I'll leave it here for today. Uh, I never got round to cutting the holes in the fabric yet. I did add some, uh, added some glue at the back because this fabric isn't uh, fastened on apart from uh, being stapled around the sides. So if I just cut holes out for the straps here, they uh, they could uh, split or rip uh, ladder or whatever you call it. Um, so I've done that. Put glue around the edge of all these holes um, that have still to be cut out. I did the attempt one the other day uh, trying to staple it but it didn't go too well so I decided to go for the uh, gluing method. So we're in the closing stages now, not too far to go, uh, just got some more parts to arrive, like I said the bolts. Uh, I'm going to put some uh, high temperature paint on that metal and the brackets. And then I've got some uh, edging to just to go on the corners, just to tidy them up, protect them a bit. And then that should be it. And hopefully it will be ready for the holidays next weekend. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye for now.